welcome back to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Elisa and today I wanted to show you how to make some different barrettes. I just got my hair chopped off, I mean literally chopped off. She cut a bunch of inches and now it's like above my shoulders so I can't really put it up in a ponytail so I thought barrettes are perfect. So I wanted to show you a, different, a few different ways to make barrettes. Of course the sky is the limit with, with this once you learn how to make the barrette. Um, and you can do anything you want, but I'm going to show you a few different techniques that I've used to make some really cute barrettes. So what you need to do is get yourself some of these little barrette backings. And you can use any kind of barrette. It doesn't have to be these kind. Um, there are some on the market. These ones were by Cousin Corporation, so you could buy these like at Michael's or Joann's. Um, there are some that will say Made in France. And to be honest, the ones that say made in France are, are better quality. So it just depends on what you want. Um, these ones work fine. As you can see, you just push these and it pops open. Um, you could even do bobby pins or, you know, little things like that. It's just totally up to you. But once you learn this technique, you can adapt it to any kind of barrette you want to make. So you're going to need some barrette backings. That's what I call these. And we're going to play with the or I'm going to show you rather, these are the Eco Stamps and I'm using this one here and I pre-made a bunch of stuff, um, I'm having some issues with my arms from overworking them, <laughs> so I've already gone through and, and made the pieces and then I'll show you how I make the uh, actual barrettes. And then here I've used a silk screen design that I imprinted onto the white clay, so I have two different designs right there and then I also have a mold I'm going to use and this is the multi feather mold and I and I think it's perfect size for a barrette it'll fit really nice so let's start by just actually making the barrette and we can go from there and I'll, I'll give you ideas on things you can add and whatnot so first you want to start off with and what I found to be a good amount is what I call a quadrant because if you get like say a, a, a Sculpey 3 or a Primo or a um, Fimo, they usually come in quadrants. And so I just take one little quadrant off of it and that's what I'm using here. And of course you have to condition it first. That's a must. It has to be pliable. It has to be softer. I mean you don't want it super mushy but you want it enough so that you can work with it. And so what I do is I start by rolling it into a snake shape. Okay, and I don't go too thin or or anything because I, I like to use my rod to help me get to the size. So then I'll start to flatten it gently. Now, depending on how rough you are with things, if you're really rough with stuff, I would go, I would probably go maybe this kind of thickness. But you can certainly go with the with the thickest setting on your pasta machine as well, which is what I did with this one. This is the thickest setting on my pasta machine. You see how this is a little thicker? So you have, it, it just depends on how rough you are with things. Like if you're going to make a child's um, barrette, I would go a little thicker because then there's less chance of it breaking. So that's the only reason. And what you could also do is if this was too thin for you after you rolled it through the thickest setting on your pasta machine, you could double it up. You can either fold it in half or you could take another sheet and put it on top. So just up to you and your preferences. So I'll go ahead and go through on the pasta machine on the thickest setting just for you to see. And so that's my thickest set. So what I like to do is make sure that whatever I'm going to do, that it looks neat. And so you want to square up your ends by cutting it with your blade. You know, you want to make it nice and, and straight. You're not, obviously not going to need all this, so I'm just going to cut it away. And move my scraps out of the way. And so what I like to do is just take the barrette and use that as my guide to how big it has to be. So you want to go, you want to extend it a little bit past the barrette, like so, and on the other side as well. That gives you a little extra lip. You don't want to go too far because then there's a chance that you could break that extra off. But you want to go far enough so that when you put it onto the barrette, that there's enough leeway there that it kind of curves around and, and gives it a nice look. And so that's what you're looking at right there. Okay? And so with this one, I'm not going to do a whole lot to it except add that feather. So you could texture this. You could make a nice little textured background. Actually, let's do that with this stamp here. And this is um, the oval stamp. 
And I'm going to use a little bit of Armor All because it's really warm here in Florida and I don't want my stamp to stick. So I just rub a little layer on there and um, then I'm just going to push this right into it. And I'm not looking to, to flatten it, I'm just looking to impart the design. And there you have it. How cool is that? I love that. I love that. That's one of my favorites. So now I've got a textured background for my, and you can wipe off the armor all for my barrette. So let me bring my barrette back in here. I'm going to lay it on top or piece it on there like so. And it's cute on its own. It doesn't even need anything. But then I'm going to come back and I've already put this into the mold. Like I said, this is the multi feather and you can just flex it until you get it, until it comes out. And then I'm going to lay that in the, well, you want to lay it like in the middle so it makes sense or, you know, center it. And I think I like that. And then I would adhere it by giving it a little press. You're not trying to mush it or distort it. How cute is that? Just like that. But now I could add powdered pigments to it. I could um, add a little paint like we did in the key and feather necklace that I made. You don't need a lot. In fact, I could just put a tiny bit on my finger probably. Ooh. Let me grab this. Because I don't, I don't want to use a lot. I'm not going for an overall saturation. I'm just going for a little color. And then I'm going to run this over with my finger. And that looks really pretty. I think that's plenty of paint. And this was the Delta Ceramicoat paint, but you can use any turquoise or any color you'd like. And, you know, just to your own taste. And so then, after that, I think I'll give it a little bit of this copper powdered pigments. Just to add even a little more color and interest to it. And you could do this on the base, whatever you want, but right now I'm just going to do it on my, my feather. And that'll just give it a whole nother look, too. I love that. So at this point, or when you're happy with it and you're completely done with decorating, I got a little on here, so I'm going to go with it all over there, too. <laughs> so if you end up getting stuff on the base, although I think I, I like it better with, with the color on the base, too. So you can do your sides. And you can do this before or after you put the feather on. Totally up to you. I think I like, really like that. That's really pretty. I'm totally going to wear these. Um, so at this point, this goes directly in your oven at the recommended temperature on the bar of, or, or brand of clay that you're using. So whatever that is, this is a, I would go with about a quarter of a, uh, an inch thickness. So it's usually about 25 minutes and bake it right on here, right on your metal backing. Now, when, by doing that, you're now, you now create the curve so it's not going to break easily because you've already got it in the curved shape. And you create a place where all you have to do after you fire it or bake it is pull this off and glue it on. And it'll have, you know, it'll be indented already for the size of the barrette that you need. So great tip. Go ahead and bake it right on the metal backing. So that's that one. That's the really cute feather. Let's move on to this one. Now this one has been stamped already, like I said, with this stamp. Now all I gotta do again is make it into the shape that I need or the size that I need. And since I have quite a bit here, I'm going to just start at the end, right here, and cut off the end. And I'm gonna work right about here because I, I want to have enough for two barrettes by, you know, why waste it? So then I'll just cut where I think it's a good spot. And I got all this left, I can make a whole nother barrette with that. So again, we're going to go a little past it and cut off any extra. And same on the other side, probably about here. And then we'll lift this up, place it on a barrette backing until we have it so that it's nicely on there. You can, if anything gets a little bent, fix that before you go in the oven with it. And how cute is that? And would it take me all of three seconds to do? I could totally come back and decorate on this even more. I can add some more, some pigments, some paint, some inks, anything I want to it to make it really unique and cute. 
So that's that one. And then I've got the silk screen one over here. Same thing. I mean, it's really you're just doing the same technique over and over again here, but using different ways to get really cute barrettes. So this one here, I'm going to flip this over. And let me cut an edge. It's always better to work with a clean edge. It just gives you a starting point, and that's that's why I always cut an edge for myself. I like I like you know to have a nice straight edge, and that way I can plan it better. Okay, so let's go about here. Cut that off, and I don't want it to be this thick, so we're gonna go about here and cut that off. And let's flip this over, and we're gonna place our barrette like so. And how cute is that? How cute are these barrettes? And what did it take me? Maybe five minutes or so to make them all? So, I mean, really, the sky is the limit with once you, once you start making these barrettes. I have literally sold hundreds and hundreds of these barrettes at art shows over the years. They were so popular. Um, I want to say I sold them between $10 and $20 a barrette, depending on how much work I put into each. So they're great sellers if you do little craft fairs or art shows or whatever. And of course, you can go above and beyond and anything, you know, add any kind of decoration to it. Um, you know, we have all kinds of cutters that we use all the time, so we could add some different cutters. Like here's some pieces that I made using the same silk screen. And I molded those pieces and I was gonna make some jewelry out of them. Here's a smaller one. I was going to make some jewelry, in, and I probably will, but you could come back and make, you know, little decorations for on top or whatever. Um, you know, add little elements that, that kind of just jazz it up. These are, these are done with the metal tools that I, that I have. I have one more. You know, obviously you wouldn't put the holes in them. But you see how I'm saying you can add to it and just kind of go nuts with it? And look, I got a piece of this, this silk screen left. I could cut this, a little strip off, and I could add it down the center and get a whole different look, like that, okay? And then if I wanted to add to it, obviously I could add on these pieces, and you've got an entirely different look just by adding little things to it. Obviously I would flatten this out and make it look nicer, but I'm just showing you that, you know, there are so many possibilities that you can do to really jazz up these barrettes and make them your own and make them unique. So, and these were done here with the, with the metal stamps. What I did was, let me move these again. I took uh, this flower from the metal stamp. I first created the round and then I just pressed that in there like that. And then I used um, this little leaf design here to go around the edges. And then I took some paint on my finger and rubbed it on there. That's how simple that was. So there's so many possibilities and so many cool looks you can get. So just explore it and have fun with it and play with it. And I'd love to see what you make. Um, you know, so if you want to upload photos and, and share those, we'd love to see them. And uh, I think that's it, really. Just a, a basic tutorial on making some barrettes that, can, that you know, you can go crazy with. So have fun, and I will see you next time. Um, make sure to check out polymerclayadventure.com. The retreat is still going on, and you can still sign up all year long and get all the classes. There's 24 classes and all, lots of live events, and just a lot going on. So, And also head over to adventureartretreats.com and get on the newsletter because we have a lot of exciting things coming up there that you want to be the first to know about. So check us out there and uh, all the products and stuff I used, you can find at polymerclaytv.com. Just click on where it says shop and you'll see all that there. Um, and you can watch the video as well if you have to go back and, and watch it a couple times to see the different techniques. You know, it'll all be there for you. So thanks again and I uh, will see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.